Welcome to Kara's Cure as we explore the cutting edge of wellness. I'm Kara Sundland. Today's episode is sponsored by the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services in Farmington. Now, you can't be well if you don't love what you're doing, right? So this is Small Business Week. And have you thought about trading burnout for freedom? That would feel good. Do you maybe want to start a business, but you can't get around what it takes? Or maybe you just don't know what it takes, or you don't have the confidence. Well, my guest today is to help you bust through all those blocks. Amy Porterfield, she can solve all of that and more as the master of creating an online business and she's got a new book coming out called two weeks notice create a successful online business to make more money work where you want and change the world I'm so excited to be speaking with you Amy so great to be here thanks for having me you know I, I hope that people may have heard of you but they haven't I mean your podcast uh, online marketing made easy has been downloaded millions and millions of times in 2020 and 2021 both your company was awarded the Inc 5000 award of one of the fastest growing privately held companies so I know you know what you're doing um, and you said you wrote this book and you're gonna give this talk right now because you want women to have the map that you didn't have right Absolutely. When I left corporate, I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to work when I wanted, where I wanted, and how I wanted to work, but I didn't know how to get started. So today's conversation will help anybody when they're just dipping their toe in the water thinking, maybe I want to do my own thing. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of people go to school and get degrees and all kinds of things, but I don't know that people know how to get a degree and how to quit their corporate job and make a really successful business that you can work anywhere. <laughs> if there was, exactly. people would sign up for it. But So number one, you say step one, you need to establish your idea and who you serve first. And this doesn't have to take a lot. It could be 30 minutes of brainstorming. Absolutely. So I think that everyone who's thinking about maybe starting their own business probably has something on their heart or they've been thinking of a few ideas. And so the best thing to do is grab a notebook, grab a pen, and just start journaling and brainstorming all the different things you could do. And to help you, I've got two prompts. Number one, think about your talents. Think about when people ask you for advice, what are they asking you for? Think about what you do in your nine to five job. Where do you offer value? Where do you excel? So first think about your talents and your gifts that you can offer. The second thing I want you to think about is if you were brave and you didn't care what everybody else thought about you leaving a nine to five job and starting your own thing, what would you do? Because we tend to worry about what everyone else is gonna think about this big leap we wanna take. Take that off of the table. What is it that you really want to do? And when you start to think about what you want to do, next comes who do you wanna serve? If you have these talents, if you can help people get results, who is the best group of people that you can serve with those talents? I think that helps a lot of folks because I, I, I you know, I, you, your online marketing course, the, the Digital Course Academy, I, I remember yes. CNBC did a story with you. There was a woman who was literally on food stamps and she knew how to make really good candy apples. And you, yes. she took your course, which was a big deal for her to even sign up for an online course and pay any money, but she did. And then apparently her first course, this woman who'd never been on TV, made like 60 grand. It was insane and she's gone on to grow even more since then. But yeah, she had this talent. She knew how to make these caramel candy apples and she started teaching people how to do that in a digital course. Her whole life has changed, but she took the leap. She had the courage to say, I don't want this. I want a new way of business, a new way of life. Okay, so step two, you wanna create weekly content to attract your customers. And I think this is where a lot of people get stuck. I mean, for people like us, we create content all day long and it's even hard for us. But this is important in that um, people who might shy away from, I don't know what to write or I don't know what to do. Why is it so important Absolutely. to create something? When I first, when I was brand new on the scene and I heard this word content, I'm like, what, what does that mean? What do you want me to do? And so when you think about content, think of stories you can tell, lessons you can share, tips you can give, value you can add. And it's either a podcast or a video or a blog post or start on social media. But you have to start creating content so you can start to learn what your audience wants or what they don't want. Now, when I say audience, I'm talking about maybe your mom and your brother and your cousin in the beginning because you don't have a big audience. The more content you consistently put out there, the more easier it is to start growing your audience. 
And what I'll tell you is that you don't want to grow your business just on social media. You want to start growing an email list. And this is foreign to a lot of people that are just starting out. But what I mean by that is you give something away of great value for free. People give you their hot commodity, their name and email so that you can start a relationship with them through email marketing much more powerful than anything you'll ever do on social media. So social media, putting out content will help you find that audience, but I want you to bring them over to your email list because that's where you can really start to see some traction in your upcoming business. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you make a list? Do people have to have a website? Can they do it through their Facebook? I love this question. So you don't even need to have a website just yet, but you do need to have what we call a landing page, just a simple web page where you tell them what you're going to give them away for free and what, and they give you their name and email. So let's say you are a baker and you want to give the top 10 tips for making the best caramel apples you can make. And so you're giving away your tips. They give you their name and email on this web page and you send them the PDF checklist. Very simple. I think my best advice for anyone starting out, let's keep it simple. Not a lot of technology, not a lot of bells and whistles. Okay. And can, you can do that pretty simply like on a WordPress site and some sort of easy plugin that <laughs> cause we, if people uh, are doing it themselves, I know you teach people how to do it themselves. Yes, I love keeping it simple. So yes, you could do something with an easy web page through WordPress, you're right. There's a tool I love called ConvertKit and it's very inexpensive, very easy to use. So ConvertKit would be how to grow your email list and how to create this one page web page to get started. So that's my favorite tool. Okay, then you wanna step three, test and track your data. And that might sound pretty official, pretty corporate if you're just starting out making candy apples. But um, basically you wanna find out what people People want more of from you? Yes, absolutely. So let's pretend you are a business coach and you want to help people that are growing their businesses. And so you're starting to put out content. Maybe you have a really cool freebie that you put out, a lead magnet. And then you're asking yourself, well, is this working? You just got to look at the data. How many people are coming to that page and signing up? That would be your conversion. And you want to start out with at least 10%. So 10% of the people that come to that page and read about your freebie, if they're signing up for it, you're doing good. So a few easy numbers you're looking at when you're posting on social media, are you getting people DMing you, direct messaging you, asking questions? Are they hitting like next to your post? So that engagement is a metric you can track as well. And here's the deal. Once you get started, one of the best decisions you can make is to hire a virtual assistant. My first virtual assistant was five hours a week. I was freaked out. I didn't know how I was going to pay her or what I was going to give her, but I knew I needed help and she did all all the metrics. She tracked that stuff for me. So if that's not your forte, if you don't have time, even five hours a week with a little extra help, you can get it done. Where's your favorite place to get a virtual assistant and to make sure they know how to do those things? <laughs> Oh, such a great question. So, you know, the first place you can look really inexpensive is Fiverr. You can Google it. Fiverr has a lot of different resources on there where people are willing to help and they want to help. Also posting on your social media, saying that you're looking for a virtual assistant. If someone's already in your world, they're likely a really good fit for someone to support you. That's how I found my first virtual assistant. It was somebody in my community. Oh, okay. So that's a great thing to do. Help. I need help. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, the next thing is you want to find a mentor. And I, I guess, it, does it have to be a mentor, someone you know, or it's a mentor like you where they follow you and listen to your podcast? Oh, I love this question. I, it could be a mentor that you know, or some of that you don't know. When I was first starting out 13 years ago, my mentors were people that did not know me, but they were in the online space where I wanted to be and they had businesses and lives like I wanted. And so, um, when I worked for Tony Robbins for many, many years and the best piece of advice that he gave me was when you want to do something, find somebody who is already doing what you want, already has the success that you want and model what they're doing, learn from them, pay attention, uh, get into their world and they will guide you either for free because you're just from afar or you can pay to, for their digital courses or their coaching, but find a mentor who has a business like the one you want and learn everything you can about how they got it.
So what have you learned? Uh, that's, a, that's too big of a question, but I love that even though... <laughs> a lot. <laughs> which is why you do these digital courses, so we have the map. But, you know, I love that I was... You, know, you have a great podcast, and it's always practical, but there's one episode where you talk about the 10 things I'm afraid to tell you. And, uh, and you know, even though you run a multi-million dollar business and you've gone from, you know, nothing to all of this, you really reveal that it doesn't mean it's all unicorns and rainbows. You have messy days, yeah. you have self-doubt. And I think a lot of people think like, I'll just be happy when I'm successful. I'll be happy when I make six figures or seven figures or whatever they want. And you've achieved a lot of what you set out to do, but you still have these kind of messy days, self-doubt. So oh, how do you handle that? And, and how, do you, how are you good to yourself in those moments? You know, just the other day, I was in a room with my peers. I, I built a multi-million dollar business and so had they, and we were sharing ideas and I started to feel self-conscious. I started to feel like an imposter, like maybe I'm not good enough to be here. 13 years in and I still have those moments that I start feeling that I'm not enough or that I don't have what it takes to cut, to, to make it. And so when that happens, even 13 years in, I asked myself this question that my friend Ed Milet taught me. He's a motivational speaker, he's amazing. And he said, ask yourself, what do I need to believe in this moment in order for me to have the confidence to, to get out there and do what I wanna do. What do I need to believe? So I always need to tell myself, what do I need to believe right now so that I get in the game and I make it work? My point is that no matter how successful you are, you are going to have that self-doubt it, the more successful you get though, the easier it is to bounce out of it. And one of the best questions is, what do I need to believe in this moment? Okay, that's great. And step five, you wanna set the right mindset, which you just talked about that, but also some boundaries. Um, you say we need to yes. avoid the shiny object syndrome. I think we <laughs> all have that a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely, it's so normal in the beginning. Everything looks wonderful. Everything looks like an opportunity. The problem is if you don't focus on the core offer you're putting together to make money or the audience that you wanna serve in creating the content, the foundational pieces, you will always feel spread too thin. So have boundaries around the fact that you're going to keep it simple, you can get fancy later, and you're gonna do the core foundational things you need to do. Creating content, growing your email list, knowing who you're audiences and finding that mentor so that someone can guide you through this. So put blinders on like you're a racehorse, you're running your own race and just put your head down and get to work. Okay, I'm gonna have to take notes. I, apparently I need an email list. <laughs> I create <laughs> yes. a lot of guys. Well, and that, that, that brings up something. Do you need, uh, it, what, if the, what if someone is doing is not selling a product, but they're, they're you know, maybe they're speaking or they're coaching and they don't have something to sell, so to speak. I guess they're selling themselves. Is it different? Great question. I believe that anyone doing business online should have an email list, whether you're speaking on stage, maybe you have a one-on-one -on -one group coaching, or you make money in different ways that's not a physical product, you still want an email list, and here's why. You wanna up that know, like, and trust factor. You want people to know you and like you and trust that you're the go-to person when they have a challenge related to your expertise, they're coming to you. And the only way to stay in constant communication with them is through an email list, because on social media, that algorithm changes like that and you don't know if you're even getting in front of the right people. And so the email list will always help you stay in engagement with your audience and you become their go-to source because you're always top of mind. So absolutely any kind of business growing, if you're going to business online, you want an email list. Okay, so I want to just let people know in case they are new to your work, um, you have this new book coming out, which we'll talk about that, but you also have a podcast. So that's a great way for people to start. They can listen to all these practical Absolutely. tips. And you also Absolutely. have Digital Course Academy, right? So people could sign up and like literally learn step by step how to, that would be your signature course, I think. That's my signature course, Digital Course Academy, how to create and launch a digital course based on your expertise. Everyone's got a digital course in them and you can sell this online over and over again. But my podcast, Online Marketing Made Easy, has so many list building strategies for free, especially if you're starting from scratch. So that's a great place to start. So tell us about the new book coming out. I, it's gonna, uh, and just because you're teaching everyone to be in advance, we should say it's not out yet. You're talking about no. it because we have to do things in advance, right? <laughs> 
Yes. So the book's coming out in a while, but it's called Two Weeks Notice. And I literally wrote it because this is the book I needed when I left my corporate job and had no clue what the heck I was doing. And so I want my students to sidestep all the mistakes you can make as a business owner and entrepreneur. I share all my missteps, all my big challenges and what to do instead. And it's a guidebook, literally how to start an online business from scratch. All right, I know a lot of people, especially in the age of the great resignation, are interested and maybe just feeling like, I don't know how to do it. So this is the answer, right? <laughs> Absolutely, this is your answer. So I wanna let everyone know they can find out lots of information, lots of free information, amyporterfield.com. Um, they can listen to your podcast or of course follow you at Amy Porterfield at all of the social medias, the Twitter, the Facebook, all of that, Instagram. <laughs> so uh, it's really been enlightening and I hope that everyone listening um, on Kara's Cures and even on the evening news uh, and or on the podcast, if you're listening in your car, this is sort of the, the kickstart that really you believe anyone can do this. You don't have to have a business degree. You don't even have to have a college degree. I mean, you've helped a lot of people go from burnout to freedom by just following their passion with some real steps. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. I think this is an important topic and I'm so excited that we got to talk about it. Absolutely, Amy. Been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Great to speak with you in person. A uh, big fan of the podcast and I hope everyone else will take a listen too. Thank you. Take care. You too. And that's another edition of Kara's Cures. You can go back and find more content on the cutting edge of wellness. You can see other episodes right here on WFSB Plus or if you're listening on the podcast, of course, we thank you for that. And continue to download the Kara's Cures podcast. You can follow me at Kara Sundlin on social media. I love to post this content there. Have a great day, everyone, and be well.